Hi, it's Joe and Steve from Fresh Agenda and Steve, we're out in a sun-drenched location today to give the uh, our audience the latest Global Dairy Directions update and last time, a month ago when we did this update, it was also a very warm day and you were wearing a Hawaiian shirt if you remember. So what's the, uh, the angle there is that uh, when we come out and do these things each month, there's a climate change issue yeah. or a global warming issue. Yeah. We're bringing it on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I spared you all a Hawaiian shirt this time, <laughs> uh, but we're in a swing park, as you'd say in the UK, um, and just got a little bit of instability <laughs> here in our platform. So, <laughs> And I can't reach the ground. Go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, kicking it off. Um, firstly, going to something we call our tension index, which um, uh, which is a measure of um, essentially comfort of stocks in this in the supply chain. That hasn't changed a great deal. Uh, it's probably got a little bit looser, very marginally looser. Mm -hmm. um, limited change since October, and you know essentially the one to look at there is the bottom line, which reflects total skim milk powder stocks rather than that that's been released. Um, so it's showing the tension is going to uh, tighten a little bit as we go through into uh, the next quarter, uh, which is what we'd expect because we're seeing milk supply um, milk supply growth slow down. Yes. Um, to under one percent the first half of next year, compared to twice that rate mm. um, the first half of eighteen, uh, and that's um, that's less than the growth we're seeing in trade mm. uh, at the moment, and, and likely to continue with attractive prices out there. And as you can see in the second second half, sorry, the first half of next year, um, we would see that net demand side of the equation improve. So sure. with that um, slowing supply, so. But obviously, this is an overall picture. Mm. Um, what what I guess we found is that there's quite different scenarios or outlooks for individual commodities. Yeah, that's right. And look, we'll talk about that as we go through. Mm -hmm. But it is a balanced position. Um, we're not a, we're neither bullish or, or bearish. It's it's quite mixed. Mm -hmm. And I guess the the things that we've looked at um, in our analysis again, we've we run through this chart. So within Europe, it's a delicate game as that milk supply slows down. Uh, the impact of weather on on feed supplies earlier in the year uh, is pressuring the availability of fresh skim and butter production mm -hmm. uh, while they're trying to maximise cheese output to stay in touch with demand. The flow through of that European skim milk powder balance sheet effect that's keeping prices under under check um, flows down and directly impacts prices in New Zealand and US. Um, and then the impact on on cheese values. And this gets a bit more complicated because we think the biggest driver of cheese export values at the moment potentially is the US, yep. where they've got a um, rising cheese production. They were a little nervous about uh, the demand side in that market, particularly export trade. So that's keeping their cheese prices a bit flat and putting a risk over global prices. Yeah, and interesting, um, we, we saw the signing of the USMCA uh, this week, but that hasn't removed the metal tariffs and therefore it hasn't removed the cheese tariffs from Mexico, which is, you know, so those trade issues and that the US-China truce, maybe um, those trade issues haven't completely gone away, have they? Not at all, no. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though this, this point about US exports, even though it's a small percentage of production that goes into those export markets, it's the marginal impact of that demand which is important to that market balancing. Mm. And so that's why it's staying gloomy. Mm -hmm. Um, across to the impact on whole milk powder, uh, again, the relationship between the powders is important, but um, the big thing driving that at the moment is New Zealand weather, which has given them a great season uh, in keeping whole milk well supplied because we're going through a peak which is, uh, which is flush. Mm -hmm. um, and so the total picture, it's, it's a mixed bag. Yeah. Um, so whole milk's being kept, kept cheap by the availability of supply from New Zealand and, and good South American supply. Uh, skim milk powder improving slightly, but because we've got weaker fat markets, that potentially has a risk also for cheese. So that mixed bag that we talked about. Someone's trying to shoot us. <clears throat> so in the EU, um, very mixed production outlook there as milk slows down. We're seeing, essentially seeing uh, in this half, um, less skim milk powder and butter production, certainly less whole milk production because they're making just for order. Um, and trying to maintain cheese growth where possible. We'd expect that market to tighten a bit further because we're going to see milk prices slow down. Yeah. Processors are doing their best to hold those prices up as the, as the year ends. 
Um, yeah, <clears throat> we're just seeing that return line, um, which should be a real drag on farm gate prices in, in the next couple of months, given that there will be a lagged effect before yes. that goes through to farmers. That's right. And the big thing in Europe, that that clearance sale, the mm. rundown sale or run-out sale, as you've called it there really well, um, that's seeing a speeding up the sales of interventure stocks. Look, the risk is that we're simply pushing the problem to a later time. Sure. And pushing out that uh, that stock into private stocks, even though the total stock position in Europe, that's the addition of blue and red bars, is getting better. And you can see on the right, that's actually the, the fundamental that's driving the, um, the value. Um, is is improving that position to the US again slowing milk growth uh, cheese demand is holding up cheese production is holding up um, and adding to that risk of oversupply um, and you can see the cheese turnover is slightly improved from, mm. from what it's been so cheese stock's not so dire in the US itself mm -hmm. it's just that sentiment dragging it down on the positive side, China. So what are we seeing in China? Well, it looks a bit positive. The last couple of months of trade data have been um, very positive for New Zealand whole milk powder. And again, I think we've talked about it in the last few weeks, just the reports we're getting about um, production, local production slowing, um, more of the local milk going into fresh rather than into powders. Um, again, it, it all goes pretty well for um, China to be back in the market in a fairly significant way. For whole milk, which is pretty cheap. Absolutely. Mm good value buying yep so wrapping it up Joe what's your um, what's your balance sheet look like well I guess as always um, as an economist you've always got the positives and the negatives but that EU milk slowing story is an important one and we'll see um, in the next slide uh, how the differences in EU milk output have got the biggest impact on commodity values going forward US demand um, it's it's steady but it's a US cheese exports that are the real issue um, in the US. Um, maybe a bit of tightening in the second half for New Zealand supply, China back in the market. Uh, the US-China truce, well, it's a it's at least a temporary reprieve, we think, but we'll see what occurs. And then, you know, there's probably a smaller negative list there, um, Steve, but, you know, a fairly balanced picture. Mm. So what does it actually mean for commodity values going forward and it's it's pretty flat really in yeah. the outlook once um, we once butter finds its level yeah which is still quite uncertain mm -hmm. it's finding the level at which demand will reignite particularly in europe yeah but we're seeing you know homework powder still very much i suppose capped by that good new zealand supply a bit of recovery in skim milk powder as those stocks wind down and, and fresh suppliers become a, a bit more scarce uh, and just to the right um, this is the sort of scenarios that you guys run every month just to show what the sensitivity is um, to some of these big things that we're watching. And again, um, EU milk is really the one to watch, isn't it, yeah. for, for commodity values as well as New Zealand milk production. Very good. Mm. So, Joe, chart of the week. Chart of the week this week, Steve, really couldn't go past the first positive result on GDT since May this year, up 2.2% overall. Um, skim milk powder uh, quite flat given the pace of EU intervention sales at the moment, but on a, um, a significantly smaller offering, um, a rebound in butter and um, and a healthy rise in whole milk powder. Mm. Okay. Well, that's probably all from us this week. Um, we won't be back before Christmas. I think this is our last show before. Um, before we get into 2019. So uh, wishing all our viewers, all 50 or 60 of you, on a good day, um, all the best for Christmas and New Year, and we'll see you in 2019.